Um, I know before we run out of time, we do have a couple of emails we want to get to. Alicia, can you uh, send an email this way, please, for Father? Sure. Dear Father Ron, your book, Tear in the Desert, is a heartfelt account of your experiences in Iraq as you ministered to our soldiers. How has that experience helped you to be a better and wiser priest now? Greg and Diane from Jacksonville, Florida. Well, aside, aside from the fact that you don't complain anymore, you said. Absolutely. <laughs> I'm actually, uh, when bad things happen, I know something good will happen. Actually, that's Greg and Diane, and I, th I think it's from Jacksonville, so I, th I just went to Honduras with her, Greg and Diane. Okay. <laughs> and they were leading a, a mission Honduras. And uh, it allowed me to live each day. And I, I'm still living each day with great love and great trust. I, the other day, I was really, something stressed me really bad, and I just lied down, and I said, Jesus, I trust you. I trust you. I trust you. Doesn't it put things in perspective? Much. I wake up in joy. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I feel that I'm not afraid of anything anymore. Yeah. Yeah. I think, too, uh, your witness, um, you know, I can remember watching a show like this with Mother Angelica before I was ordained a priest, and to hear the chaplain's stories really fired me up, you know, because a priest, we're unique that we can offer the Eucharist and hear confession and do the anointing of the sick. And uh, it's a powerful call that if you want to be a priest in the most bedrock fundamental realities of priesthood, the chaplaincy is certainly a, uh, a place you can do that. And it's very needed, right? I mean, Absolutely. We're getting a lot of vocations from, from the uh, military. In the archdiocese and the military, you have to be three, um, uh, you have to be attached to a diocese or a religious mm -hmm. order, and they co-sponsor them. And then after they've served three years, then they go active duty on the military. They have uh, quite a few of them. There's wonderful stories. The military archdiocese. Um, so, so we really we want to encourage yeah. men to really consider, oh, you know, mm -hmm. stepping up. Priests step yeah. up and be military chaplain. If God's calling you, yeah, it's like the hounds of heaven. You yeah. got to answer. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Let's get to another email if we can, Alicia. Okay. All right, dear life on the rock. Is there an age limit to become a chaplain, and do you have to go through basic training? If you are not in shape, can you still serve? And this is from Cole, right nearby in Hansville, Alabama. Well, I would be in shape just to get... <laughs> Cole, you, you want to be in shape <laughs> because the Marines won't give you much respect if you're not in shape. <laughs> this is why you should come to the Radix Camp Gargano Boot Camp, ladies and gentlemen, for the gentlemen out there. Absolutely. So we can get you in shape, then we'll send you... Overseas. That was one of the things I complained about a lot when I served with the Marines in Okinawa, yeah. Japan. I always said, oh my God, these scars, these, this, this running too much. But it was the most <laughs> joyful thing. It really mm. kept me going. Um, uh, but to be a military chaplain, the age limit, actually, we have a chaplain I served with was 75 years old, a priest. Mm. And then Father Jim O'Neill, he's a priest. He's just got back from Korea. And, he, and uh, he's from our diocese. He's 62 or 63. So, so really, the age is pretty range. The range of age is pretty wide, and people should they should look into it. Gen men, men should look into this then. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Father, we're running uh, very close to being out of time. You got a couple of gifts there. I know you want to share. I do have some gifts for you. First of all, for Brother Mark. Father Mark. Yep. Yeah. Father Mark. <laughs> well, I, as a priest to priest, we're brothers. Okay, that's right. That's and right. so what yeah. I got you is a navy. Oh, okay. United like States that. Navy brother. All right. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you. Get warm and nice there. Yeah. It's like that. Excellent. And this is uh, United States Middle Eastern operation, which is what we, we're, we're talking about right now. And then I have on the back, <laughs> Unleashed. <laughs> <laughs> For that's oh, that's great. <laughs> <laughs> Unleashed. <laughs> And I got a second sword. one for you since you're okay. trying to do all this thing. I looked at all your, yeah. your websites Camp and everything. Camp Gargano, yeah. Court, Camp Gargano, yeah. and I said, well, that's a great idea. Get started there. But you probably need to get a Marine to help you out with some things. <laughs> Not, and uh, this is uh, the Marines. On the back, it's the which uh, their mascot is a bulldog. But this is uh, their emblem, United States Marine Corps, and it's Semper Fidelis. That's awesome. Always awesome. Faithful. Father, Which thank is you. always what you are. You have been great. Oh, thank God you. bless you. Thank you. Thanks the book, Tear in the thank Desert, you, ladies and gentlemen, please check it out. Uh, next week we have with us La Angelus. <laughs> I think I said that right. We're pitching tonight to Memorial Day weekend, America the Beautiful by Simonetta. Thank you for being with us, ladies and gentlemen. We'll see you next week. Oh, beautiful for special.
Majesties.